Parasites are those organisms which reside or depend on nutrition on a living host and cause diseases in that particular host. All those viruses having single-stranded RNA are the ones that are capable of causing diseases or infection in plants. Mumps is nothing but the infection of the throat wherein the throat on one side it will swell because of the viral infection. In the case of viroids, viroids do not have a protein coat therefore they do not have a capsid. Hello everyone, a warm welcome to the session on biology for class 11th CBSE. I am Dr. Divya, biology faculty, Vidyashram School of Excellence, Mysore. So in this session, let us discuss the topic viruses, viroids, prions and lichens under chapter 2 biological classification and let us look into some of the MCQs that can be framed under this particular topic. So talking about viruses, so earlier in the previous sessions if you remember we had learned about Whittaker's system of classification wherein we studied kingdom Monera, kingdom Protista, kingdom Fungi, kingdom Plantae and kingdom Animalia, right. But viruses, viroids, prions and lichens were not studied because they were not included under Whittaker's system of classification. So that is why this has been placed as a separate topic in your textbook. So talking about viruses, viruses are those organisms which are not true living, meaning because they don't have a particular cell, instead they have a genetic material around which they have a protein coat. So like how other organisms have cells, they do not have a cell. So that is why they are not considered true living. So these viruses are smaller than bacteria when you look at the size and they are non-cellular meaning they do not have a cell. As I told you, instead they have an inert crystalline structure which is made up of protein. So that is why whenever they are outside the living cell, they are in the inert crystalline form or they are in the inactive form. The best example that we can take off is the coronavirus. So you all might have known right so there were news about it saying that the coronavirus stays on plastic for so many days stays on metal surfaces for so many days stays in the air or in the soil for so many days right why is that because they can live even outside the body of a host but they are in the inactive form only when they enter into a host or any organism then they became become active and then they start to reproduce. So that is why viruses are in the form of inert crystalline proteins when they are outside the living cells. And what are these viruses made up of? So they are made up of proteins and along with that they have the genetic material that is either they can have an RNA or they can have a DNA. This RNA can either be of a single strand or it can be double strand or if it is a DNA, they can they are double-stranded DNA. And as I told you, viruses, they need a living cell for their survival. It doesn't mean that when they are outside the body, they are dead. No, it's only that they are in the inactive state. But when they get a living host, that is when they start to replicate. So, viruses are obligate parasites. So, what are parasites? Parasites are those organisms which reside or depend on nutrition on a living host and cause diseases in that particular host. So obligate. Now you know what is parasite, right? Now what is obligate parasites? Obligate parasites are those organisms which always need a living host for their survival and outside the living host they are in the inactive form. So such organisms are placed and are called obligate parasites. So viruses are one such obligate parasite and, and they replicate or they multiply inside the host and they eventually start killing the host. Any virus once it enters into a human body or an animal body or a plant body very soon they keep multiplying, multiplying in such large numbers increasing the infection in the body and eventually killing that particular 
organism. So next talking about some of the discoveries that was made on viruses and the term virus that is there it is nothing but it is called as poisonous fluid. So virus means poisonous fluid or venomous fluid because there is no cure for viruses. Once it infects a human it can the activity of it is can only be curbed to some extent but complete cure cannot be done. So that is why it is called as venomous fluid or poisonous fluid. So talking about the discovery on virus. So there are three scientists that is Dmitry Ivanovsky, M. W. Bejerinek and W. M. Stanley. So these three scientists actually gave a lot of contribution towards the discovery of viruses and the activity of viruses. So let us look into it. So Dmitry Ivanovsky in the year 1892, he was the first person to find out or extract virus from tobacco plant wherein it was causing mosaic disease of tobacco. So mosaic disease of mo tobacco is just like how a mosaic tile looks just like patches right. Same way the leaf will also have yellow to white patches in it. So that is why it is called mosaic disease of tobacco. And the virus, he was the first person to say virus means or the coined the term virus wherein he said virus means venom or poisonous fluid. And M. W. Bejerinek in the year 1898, what he did was he extracted. So tobacco mosaic virus causes tobacco mosaic disease in tobacco plants. So what M. W. Bejerinek did was he took a diseased tobacco plant which was infected by virus. He crushed the leaves of those diseased plant and then he sprayed it on a healthy plant. So when he sprayed it on the healthy plant after few days the healthy plant also started to show symptoms of tobacco mosaic disease. So he was the first person to find out that even the fluid of the virus is also responsible for causing diseases. So what he did? He took the extract of infected tobacco plant and he proved that when you spray it on healthy plant, it causes infection in the healthy plant as well. And therefore, he called that extract, diseased extract or infected viral extract, he called it as contagium vivium fluidum. Contagium vivium fluidum. And W. M. Stanley in the year 1935, he was the first person to say viruses are inactive outside the body of a living organism wherein they remain in the form of inert crystalline structures. So he said that the viruses can be crystallized and these crystals, they contain some proteins that are inert or inactive when it is outside the host cell. So these were about the discoveries. So all these three are important because it can come for one mark. So next talking about the infection process of viruses. So viruses, those viruses that infect plants, they are made up of single stranded RNA meaning all those viruses having single stranded RNA are the ones that are capable of causing diseases or infection in plants. And all those viruses which have either a single stranded RNA or a double stranded RNA or a double stranded DNA are the ones that can cause infection or diseases in animals. And those viruses that have double stranded RNA are the ones that cause or infects the bacteria and such viruses are called as bacteriophages. This one is very very important about bacteriophage. It can come for the exam. So what does bacteriophage have? Bacteriophages have double stranded RNA and they are capable of infecting a bacteria. So therefore what is a bacteriophage? Bacteriophages are those double are those viruses that have a double stranded DNA and that can infect a bacteria and these bacteriophages they are covered by a protein coat and that protein coat is nothing but capsid. So what is the capsid made up of? It is made up of protein. So this is the capsid. So this entire thing as you can see here this is the head of the virus. It is nothing but made up. It is called a capsid. The covering is called as a capsid and it is made up of proteins and each of these capsid when you even more further look into the capsid, you can find smaller units called as capsomeres and these units are arranged in the form of a helical structure. So therefore it forms a polyhedral geometric structure, right? Can you see the head of the virus? It is almost a geometrical structure where it, wherein it is in polyhedral shape. 
Next talking about some of the diseases caused by viruses. So viruses can cause diseases in human beings as well as in plants. So talking about diseases caused in humans, they can cause mumps. So mumps is nothing but the infection of the throat wherein the throat on one side, it will swell because of the viral infection. It's just curable and smallpox. Smallpox earlier in the uh, long year, earlier years or long, long ago, they were actually quite contagious and there was no cure for it. But nowadays, smallpox has been completely eradicated because of the invention of a vaccine. Nowadays, uh, smallpox is not there. So, smallpox, then it is herpes, herpes that is caused by herpes simplex virus, which is actually a sexually transmitted disease. Then we have influenza virus that commonly causes the fevers and the colds. And we have the AIDS that is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So AIDS is caused by human papilloma virus or human immunovirus that is HIV. So AIDS is caused by HIV virus. Next talking about the diseases in plants. So in plants they can cause mosaic formation in the leaves that is yellow and white patches on the leaves will occur and they can also make the leaf to roll and to curl. The edges of the leaf will start to curl. So they can cause leaf rolling and leaf curling. Then they can cause yellowing of the leaf and they can also clear the veins. So when you look at the leaf, you can see the veins are also green in color. But if there is viral infection, the veins will lose its green color and it will start to appear clear or uh, colorless so therefore uh, that is nothing but vein clearing and it can also reduce the height of the plant it can cause dwarfing and it can retard the growth of the plant or stunted growth of the plant so these are the diseases that are caused by viruses on humans and plants next let's talk about one more organism that is viroids so viroids was discovered in the year 1971 by a scientist named T O Diner. And these viruses, when you look at the size of viruses, or uh, they are bigger than the viroids. So, therefore, viroids are smaller than viruses. So, they are smaller than viruses and they also cause disease in plants. That is, they cause potato spindle tuber disease in plants. So, and they cause hepatitis D in humans. That is the only disease that is caused by virus. Next, talking about the genetic material, they have a low molecular weight free RNA, but the only difference between viroids and viruses, viroids do not have a protein covering, whereas viruses, they have a protein coat and that protein coat is called a capsid, right? But in the case of viroids, viroids do not have a protein coat, therefore they do not have a capsid. And they have, as I told you, they have low, low molecular weight free RNA. So, this is about viroids. So, what's the difference? Viroids are smaller than viruses and viroids do not have a protein coat. Therefore, they lack a capsid. Next, talking about prions. So, prions, they have a protein coat, but the protein is abnormally folded. So, proteins, they have a particular structure, but in this case, they, there are abnormal folds in the protein structure. And they cause infection, in infection that is mainly they cause neurological diseases and these prions are smaller than viruses and they also cause diseases like bovine spongiform encephalopathy which is also called as mad cow disease. So, this prions they cause bovine spongiform encephalopathy which usually affects adult cows. Because it is a neurological condition, it affects the brain and the cow will start to behave in a different way. So, that is why it is also called as mad cow disease or in bovine spongiform encephalopathy. So, this is actually a precursor of C.R. Jacob disease in humans. So, in humans, there is a disease called as C.R. Jacob disease which is crucified. It's called Crucifil Jacob disease and this disease also occurs in aged people wherein it affects the brain and it causes dementia in them. So, this is responsible, this disease is responsible for dementia in adult humans or old age people. So, this is about prions.
So next talking about lichens. Lichens, there's always a confusion whether we have to place lichens under plant kingdom or should we put it under fungi because they show characteristics of both. So that is why to avoid the confusion in this particular chapter, they have placed it separately. Lichens have been put separate. So lichens, they are symbiotic in nature. You all have seen lichens, right? On, on the tree trunks, on the tree barks, everywhere you have seen lichens. They occur like grayish green patches or white patches on the rocks, even orange patches also, it is nothing but lichen. So this is how a close-up of lichen looks. So you can find it on twigs and all that. And these lichens are symbionts. So symbiont means they grow with mutual understanding or in mutual association with other organisms. Say for, for example, this lichens, they grow along with algae and fungi. Wherever lichen is there, there itself below the lichen, you can find algae and fungi growing. So it is like maintaining a communal relationship or sorry, maintaining a harmonial relationship with fungi and lichen. That is nothing but symbionts. So they have two components like it is called as phycobiont and mycobiont. So the algal component. So I told you lichens, wherever lichen is, lichen is there, there you can find both algae and fungi. If you find algae, it is called as the phycobiont. And if you find fungi, it is called as the mycobiont. So algae, it is autotrophic in nature. They manufacture their own food and in turn they give the food to Fungi, because fungi are heterotrophic, they are saprophytic, right? They give the food to fungi. Fungi in turn makes use of, of that food that is given by algae and in turn it will provide shelter to algae. So that is how lichen harbors or gives home to two organisms that is algae and fungi. That is uh, algae is the phycobiont component of fungi and uh, sorry, uh, lichen and fungi uh, is the mycobiont component of lichen. Okay. And also lichens, they are good pollution indicators, meaning wherever there is heavy pollution, their lichens will not grow. That is why in cities, you hardly get to find lichens. But when you go towards villages or areas which is less polluted, on the trees and all, you can find it covered with lichens. So therefore, it is understood in a place, if you don't find lichens growing, it is understood that that place is too much of polluted, the air is too much polluted. So that is how scientists can easily find out whether the area is less polluted or too much polluted because lichens, they act as pollution indicators. So this was about this session or this particular topic wherein we understood what viruses are, viroids are, prions are and lichens are. So now we know this. So let's move on to solving some of the MCQs that can be framed from this particular topic. So the first one, the name virus was given by Carolus Linnaeus, Whittaker, Dimitri Ivanovsky, Theodiner. No, Theodiner, he gave uh, viroids, the name viroids. So Carolus Linnaeus, no, he is the father of binomial nomenclature. He has something to do with taxonomy. Is it Whittaker? No, Whittaker has something to do with the classification system, right? So the answer is Dimitri Ivanovsky was the first to discover viruses and he was the one to call virus as a poisonous fluid or uh, venomous fluid. Next, dash are obligate parasites. So is it bacteria? No, bacteria can survive even without a host. Fungi can also survive without a host. Lichens can also, but it is viruses that are obligate parasites which always need their host to, need a host to multiply or replicate. So they are, ob viruses are obligate parasites. Next, the genetic material in viruses, is it DNA, is it RNA? Of course, it is DNA and RNA because they can have double-stranded DNA, they can have single-stranded RNA and also they can have a double-stranded RNA. So here, when A and B both are correct, now you have to see which is the right answer. Is it either DNA or RNA? No, because they have both, right? So the right answer here is both DNA and RNA is the right answer. Next, the viruses that infect bacteria are called, what are they called? Are they called viroids? No, because vir viroids are not viruses. They are different organisms. Is it mycobiont? No, because mycobiont is the fungal component of algae. Is it bacteriophages? Yes, it is bacteriophages because bacteriophages are those viruses. Don't get confused because there is bacteria here. No, 
Bacteriophages are viruses. They are not bacteria. They are viruses that are capable of causing infection in bacteria or capable of infecting bacteria. So, the right answer here is bacteriophage. Next, capsid is a dash. Is it a lipid coat? Is it a cellulose layer? Is it a protein coat or a chitin layer? Lipid coat? No. Is capsid made of lipid? No. So, the answer is wrong. Is it made of cellulose? No. Only plants are made of cellulose. Is it a protein coat? Yes, it is made up of protein. So, therefore, option C is the right answer. So, capsid is nothing but the covering of virus wherein it is uh, the around the genetic material. There is a cover, right, which is polyhedral in shape. That is nothing but capsid and it is made up of protein. So, therefore, it is a protein coat. Next, talking about contagium vivium fluidum was the term coined by who coined this term? Is it Whitaker? M. W. Bejerinek, W. M. Stanley or T. O. Diner. T. O. Diner actually uh, discovered viruses or gave the name virus. Uh, w. M. Stanley actually find out that viruses are inert in the form of inert crystals when outside a living host. Whitaker, he was the person who uh, went in for classification. He has nothing to do with uh, studying about viruses and all that. So, it is the M. W. Bejerinek because M. W. Bejerinek was the person who find out that you take out the you ex, take out the extract of a diseased plant and then spray it on a healthy plant it is capable of causing infection so, and he called that particular extract as contagium vivium fluidum the answer is m w bejeri nick next dash lacks protein coat it is viroids because viruses have a protein coat it's not prions but not none of the above as well because virus is viroid is the right answer you can remember it as devoid the word devoid in English means lack of something. So, devoid, viroid. So, viroid are organisms which are devoid of protein coat or which lack a protein coat. The answer is viroids here. Next, viroids were discovered by, it was discovered by T.O. Diner, not M.W. Bejerinek and W.M. Stanley because they, have, they uh, worked on viruses, not viroids. Carolus Linnaeus, he was into classification and naming and all that, not into working on organism. So, therefore, uh, Carolus Linnaeus is not the right answer. It is T.O. Diner who discovered viroids. Next, abnormally folded proteins are found in. Is it prions, viroids, lichens or viruses? Viroids, they don't have protein at all because they don't have a protein coat. So, the answer is wrong. Next, lichens, no, lichens, uh, they don't have protein coat. Viruses, they have a protein coat, but the protein is not abnormally folded. It is prions which have a protein coat, but the only thing is the coat, the protein is folded abnormally. So, the answer is A, prions. Next, mad cow disease in cattle, which is called as bovine spongiform encephalopathy is caused by dash organism. Is it viroids, prions, virus or lichens? Lichens, they don't cause diseases. Viruses, they cause diseases such as mumps, influenza and all that in animals and humans. Prions, so prions actually cause mad cow disease. Prions is the right answer. Next, the algal component in lichen symbiotic association is called algal component. Algae is something related to plants. So, therefore, it is called as phycobiont. So, phycobiont is the answer here. Not mycobiont is a fungal component. Mycorrhiza are those organisms that live in association with the roots of some plants. So, not that. Symbionts means it is mutual relationship. That, that doesn't hold good here. So, phycobiont is the right answer. So, the fungal component in lichen symbiotic association is it is mycobiont because mycology is the study of fungi. So, therefore, here mycobiont, remember it like that. Next is dash is a pollution indicator. Is it fungi, algae, lichen or prion? So, lichen is a pollution indicator because wherever there is high pollution, so their lichens will not grow. So, this was about this session wherein we know now what kind of MCQs can be framed under this particular topic. So, from the, this can come for the exam as well. So, with this, this session comes to an end as well as the chapter biological classification comes to an end. So, I hope you understood this. So, we shall meet again in the coming sessions wherein we will discuss a new topic or a new chapter under that few topics and some of the MCQs that can be framed under those topics. So, see you in the next session. Thank you.